So you're thinking about living in downtown San Diego. Well, in this video, I'm going to take you on a tour of the downtown area on the map. I'm going to share the good and the bad. I'll share some various price points and any future developments. I'll do my best at covering it all. It's not for everyone, but if you enjoy living somewhere that's walkable with high energy and then bonus on the water, then this might just be the place for you. Make sure you stick around at the end though, as I will be recapping the market here in downtown and also sharing some video footage so you can get a feel for what it's like living in the heart of San Diego. We're gonna get after it right now. Hey, if this is your first time to my channel, welcome. And if you want to learn everything there is to know about San Diego and surrounding areas so you can live like a local, make sure you subscribe and tap that bell to be notified so you can be first to learn about the market here in San Diego, California. My name is Jamie and my team and I help people all over the country relocate and invest in real estate right here in San Diego. So whether you're ready to make a move now or just planning ahead for your future, make sure you give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email. We are happy to help you make that move to the best city in California where we do everything but the packing. All right, so we're gonna start this video off with me sharing my screen and heading into Google Maps. All right, welcome to my computer. So I first wanted to show you the county. So I have the map open right now and you can see all of San Diego County. It's pretty big, spans all the way out to the desert. So you really do get the best, best, best of both worlds, including ocean, beach life, desert, mountain life. But today we're focusing on the downtown area, which is pretty south and location wise, you're about 20 miles to the Mexican border. You have the San Diego airport right here. It's about a five minute drive or let's say seven to $10 Uber ride. So very close to the airport, which is extremely convenient. The closest beach that you have or the beaches that you have to San Diego is gonna be right down here in Coronado. So if you're looking for like white sandy beaches, this is the spot. And then the second closest would be Ocean Beach. The cool thing about this is both Coronado and OB, Ocean Beach, have dog beaches. So if you have a pup, you're within a 10 minute drive to the nearest dog beach. So really, really convenient. I have a dog and I love that we can just, even early in the morning, if I wanna catch the sunrise and take my pup to the ocean before work, I can do that. Huge bonus right there. The downtown area is this right here. And it's broken up into basically four different neighborhoods. You have Little Italy, which is the north end. You have East Village, which is on the east. Gas Lamp, which is more southern. And then Cortez Hill, which is kind of northeast of the downtown area. And each of these areas really offer something different and different lifestyle. Um, different types of condos, uh, living situations, things like that. When looking to move to this area, if you're just looking online and you're looking at, you know, Zillow listings, you might be shocked to see that some beautiful condos are in the East Village over here. And then when you go to tour it in person, you realize, oof, maybe I don't want to live here. The apartment's really nice. The condo's really nice. The streets, not so nice. So I really want to take this time to break up all these areas down here because they're all very different from one another. Uh, so stick with me. Going back to location, it really can't be beat. You're, you're close to so many things. There is no shortage of places to go, things to see, things to do. One of them being Balboa Park, which is right here. It's the largest cultural park in America. You got museums. I think there's about 15 museums. There's botanical gardens, art galleries. They do free concerts all year round. The symphony plays there. You also have the San Diego Zoo, which is in the park as well. So just a really awesome place to go if you're looking, you know, just to have a chill Sunday afternoon, whatever it may be. But you're right here. You're a quick drive or even a bike ride away. And then you also have the Port of San Diego Cruise Terminal, which is right here. The marina, so all the boats are in here as well. You have Seaport Village, which is right down here south. This is a very popular spot, very well known for people to go and have lunch on the water. 
it's it's basically a place to go when you want to enjoy walking around, seeing some shops. There's a wine bar, there's good restaurants, and then there's parks all down here as well. So you can go enjoy, have lunch, and then go to the park and then, you know, enjoy the afternoon walking around. So this is uh, in this area right here. It's no secret that California as a whole does not have good public transportation, especially down here in Southern California. And that goes for San Diego as well. You have a trolley and that trolley will take you through the downtown area. Now there was like a quiet ordinance that was passed. Basically what that is, our train conductors are not allowed to sound their horn when going through the stops right here. So of course they have safety measures in place, but they really do that for the residents. So it's not a nuisance to them. So even if you live close to the train, you're not going to necessarily hear it. So it's great. I pass the train almost every day when I, cause I live in little Italy. When I walk to, uh, down towards the water, I will pass the train tracks and it's, it's not a loud train. So that's really beneficial. Things to do, Petco Park, really famous, you know, Petco Parks where the San Diego Padres play. That is in the gas lamp quarter. There are no shortage of things to do in the gas lamp quarter. That's where all the bars and restaurants are, all the clubs. So if you wanna go out dancing, gas lamp is where you would go. You are a 10 minute drive to Coronado Island, which Coronado Island is absolutely stunning. There's really great restaurants. You have Orange Avenue, which is the main strip where all the restaurants are right here. So you can take a drive, go to Coronado for the day, end up at Hotel Del Coronado, which is the famous hotel that's on the water and catch the sunset. So let's talk about the different neighborhoods in downtown. I'm gonna start with Little Italy. It spans from about this Northern end right here, and then it goes to about here. So that's all of Little Italy. There's two main strips where all the restaurants are gonna be, and that is going to be India Street, and Kettner Avenue, which they run parallel from one another. And this is a huge tourist and local spot. People come out here to have dinner. So for all the foodies, this is the spot. There is amazing restaurants. It is Little Italy, so majority of the restaurants are gonna be Italian, but there are tons of restaurants that aren't Italian. You have Born and Raised, Morning Glory, which is a very popular brunch spot. Ironside, Kettner Exchange, which is one of the best bars in the area. There is ooh, Camino Riviera and Kings and Queens. So there's a lot of really amazing options in this area. Oh, Queenstown, I can't forget about Queenstown. That's New Zealand cuisine. So if you're looking for a night out to have dinner, look no further, come to Little Italy. Everybody else will be here on Friday and Saturday as well too. So come early so you can get a parking spot. Now, one thing I love about Little Italy too is they keep it really clean. So we are in the downtown area and there are no shortage of homeless people living on the street. That is uh, something that's unavoidable uh, during this time. You know, it ha wasn't like this three years ago, pre-pandemic, but um, California as a whole has seen a huge increase in the homeless population. And in terms of San Diego, a lot of the homeless are in this area, but Little Italy has only a fraction of the homeless here. Uh, it's a lot cleaner. They're actually, every morning when I'm walking my dog, there are people that are scrubbing the sidewalks. So they're, you know, they change all the trash and while they're there, they scrub the sidewalks. If there's any graffiti, like if any, any time I've ever seen graffiti, which is very, very seldom in this area, it's gone by the next day. They're out there cleaning it up. So I really, I respect that and I appreciate the them so much for keeping this part of town really clean because the other parts of downtown, they don't have that same standard. So that is really nice that it's clean down here. It does feel more neighborly. The buildings were built, a lot of the buildings down here were built in the early 2000s. So I think like 2007, there's a huge boom. A lot of buildings were built in like 2006, 2007. Um, and again, this is all this area right here. You're just walking distance to Waterfront Park, which is a newer development. I believe this was opened in 2018. It surrounds the historic admissions building, the San Diego admissions building. It has a, an amazing uh, playground for children. It has uh, water fountains, like a splash fountain to play in. There's a cafe so you can get coffee and little sandwiches for lunch there. And also they hold concerts. So there's the 
There's EDM concerts that are a couple times a year. They have Boots in the Park, which is a country concert. They have that a couple times a year. And it's a huge event. It covers, it spans from the entire park. It's really awesome. And you're also on the water too. And you get a killer view of the city at night. You can see all the buildings are all lit up down here. Well, they also have like a taco fest there as well. So they, they do a bunch of events at Waterfront Park, but it's walking distance to Little Italy. So very convenient. Everything is walking distance. I would say if you're in the downtown area you're within 30 minutes of walking and 30 minutes would take you from uh, little italy to east village that would be the longest span but you can get to the gas lamp in about 20 minutes from little italy and vice versa so 20 to 30 minutes i would say and you're pretty much you you can walk the entire downtown area all right so heading over to cortez hill this is on this is like northeast of downtown Cortez Hill is up on a hill. Now, the cool thing about this area is it, it doesn't necessarily feel like you're in a city. You It has a big neighborly feel to it. It's so quiet. It's much more quieter than any of the other neighborhoods we're going over today. And there's it's cleaner as well. There's not as many homeless in this area. And somebody put it to me in a way that just made perfect sense. Um, he said that the reason why there's not as many homeless up there is because you're walking up the hills, they're not gonna push their carts or lug their stuff with them every time they go back and forth from the hill. So it almost mitigates the amount of homeless people that are gonna go and sleep on the streets in Cortez Hill. And you definitely see it. Once you start driving up to this area, you can see that the homeless population gets left behind. Um, so that's one really cool thing about this area. And the buildings are about early 2000s, about the same as Little Italy. You're going to get a lot of these built in like 2005, 2007 area as well. There's not too much to do in Cortez Hill. You have to, if, like in terms of restaurants, you're going to be going to Little Italy or heading down the gas lamp, which you can see it's a straight down 6th Avenue and you're in the heart of the gas lamp quarter. But little Cortez Hill, excuse me, is um, doesn't necessarily feel like you live in a downtown area. So about a little bit further removed. If you wanted to walk to, let's say, Waterfront Park, it's about a 20 minute walk to go straight down here just to give you a little bit of insight on that. Then we have East Village, which is east. This is a this has been newly developed and it is. They've been cleaning it up for a while. You know, a lot of developers have come in and put high rises in there. You'll see some of the nicest buildings are in the East Village because they have it's the newer buildings that are in the East Village. But this area has a long way to go. You might have a beautiful you might be living in a beautiful high rise condo or apartment. But you walk outside your building and you feel like you're in a completely different world. So I would highly take that into consideration. I know a lot of people start their home search online before moving somewhere. And when they look at this area, they go, wow, I want to live in East Village. And then surprise, surprise, when you see it in person, it's just not as nice, clean. Now, with that being said, though, every it's subjective, right? It is very subjective. I am not here to force my opinion by any means. I just want to share the facts. I just want to give you the facts straight up so you can make the educated decision for yourself to confirm whether or not one thing is important to you over something else. So that is up to you to decide. So just be wary. East Village, yes, uh, they're gentrifying the area. A lot of high rises, brand new buildings, stunning views. Like these, these are the 30 floor high rises with the, you know, the pool on the roof and you can see into Peco Park. Like you can even watch games from your apartment buildings. You can see them on the big screens. And then Gas Lamp. Gas Lamp is very popular for being the, the part. It's where you go to party. It's where you go to get a drink and go to nightclubs. Um, it is a younger crowd. I would say the average is probably late 20s or so that live here. But really cool if you're looking for a night out. Now, living here, it is a lot noisier. So noise is a factor. The buildings are also older. These, this is a more like historic part of downtown area. So with that becomes buildings that aren't as well insulated, windows that are single pane windows, right? So you are definitely going to hear external noise more in Gaslamp than you will pretty much in any other area. 
Um, I will say living in Little Italy in the building that I'm in, it is, I think this building was 2008. Yep, 2008, I can't hear a peep because it's newer construction. The way that they build them now is completely different than the way that they built them 80 years ago. So Gaslamp has cooler looking buildings if you like that look, if you like that historic look, that craftsman type look, you see that here, but just be uh, understanding that because you are in the gas lamp, it is more crowded. It is more rowdier, especially on the weekends. You will hear the outside noise. One of my favorite places is called the Shout House, and it is in gas lamp. It's so much fun. I believe there's one in Vegas as well. But if you're looking, if you enjoy music, if you're somebody who enjoys music and live music, they do the dual pianos. They're incredibly talented. When, whenever I go there, I am amazed at how talented these people are. They're performers and they are the best performers in my book. So one of my favorite places to go. I love the Shout House. I recommend 10 out of 10. If you've been, please comment below and let me know your experience. Please say you agree with me. Um, really cool place. And it, the gas lamp has other cool places as well. There's there's country bars, there's reggaeton bars, there's EDM bar or clubs, I should say. Um, hip hop clubs, like there is a there is a club for pretty much any genre. So it caters to everybody's tastes, really. Um, restaurants, restaurants are decent. I wouldn't say it has the best food in the gas lamp, but there are some really incredible restaurants as well. So one restaurant I want to show highlight in this area that I love, and I think it's a really, the ambiance is really cool. It's called Lumi. So Lumi is upstairs. I think it's on the fourth level or so. So you get a really cool view of the skyline. It's also outdoors, really delicious sushi. So if you're in this area, I highly recommend checking out Lumi. Again, let me know if you've been there, if you plan on going, tell me what your experience was in the comments. I'd love to know. And I'd also like to know if I'm making these suggestions and people take my word for it, if they actually did enjoy it or not. Because of COVID, a lot of streets have been blocked off in recent areas to create that outdoor dining experience. So that has happened at 4th Street. Where are we, Market? 5th, I'm sorry, 5th and 6th Avenue. I don't believe 4th is shut down, but 5th and 6th Avenue are shut down. And I've just noticed whenever I walk down these areas, it's just not, it's just not clean. There's also a lot of empty businesses. A lot of businesses have shut down in the last couple of years and you can see it. You can see, you know, RIP to these, these small businesses because um, some streets are very desolate feeling. There's a lot of people walking around, people that live on the streets walking around, but with empty establishments. You don't see that in other parts of downtown. You don't see that in Little Italy. You see it in Gaslamp. Let's break down cost in these areas. The most popular is going to be Little Italy. This is the area that if people are thinking about moving to downtown, they first look at Little Italy. But when you look at Little Italy, you'll notice that it is higher. Um, it costs more for a one bedroom condo, let's use that as an example, than it would for to buy one in Cortez Hill, East Village, or the gas lamp. So the average for a one bedroom condo purchase is going to run about 700,000. Now, if you're looking in Cortez Hill, the average for a one bedroom, think about 550,000. East Village, you're looking at about an average for a one bedroom being 650,000. And then the gas lamp, look at an average of about 550,000 again. So that can kind of help you determine what areas kind of fit within your budget. Now you could get the gas lamp um, you can get something for about 400,000. They do have like studios that are for sale. They are on the smaller side. So I think about 400 square feet or so. But for a lot of people when they are, especially if they're younger and they want to live somewhere that's very lively and they're just around things to do 24 seven, but they're ready to purchase. They're ready to start building wealth by buying real estate. Something like a studio might be perfect for them. They can get something 400 square feet, especially if you are just working and playing and you're not spending too much time home, then it could be a great place to start. I think real estate is all about building wealth. So starting small and then gradually getting bigger, getting grander as time goes on, as you buy, build that equity, sell.
buy, build that equity, sell. And then you just keep on moving up the ladder. In terms of renting, so if you're looking to rent an apartment, I'll do one bedroom apartment again as the example. So for Little Italy, you're looking at an average of about 28 to 3,000. I say 3,000 because there's really not much available right now. And the ones that are available are around 32, but there are apartments for less than that. So I wanna say about 28 to 3,000 a month. It's just inventory is so incredibly low. There's hardly any available apartments in this area as I'm recording this video. Cortez Hill, looking at a one bedroom again, using that as an example, you're looking at about 2,400 a month for the average. East Village, again, I would say about 24 to 2,500 a month as the average. And then Gas Lamp, you can find something 22, 2,300 a month. So there you have it. That's kind of like broken down if you're looking for apartments to rent. Now some new developments. Uh, when I walk, so I live, like I said, I live in Little Italy and I walk around all the time. I I see the vision. I can see the vision of downtown. So downtown has changed so much in the last 10 years, especially with the revamping of the Little Italy. It's brought so many people to this area. I mean, just take a walk down India Street, which is right here, and you'll just kind of fall in love. It has such a cool vibe. It's very cultured as well. Uh, it brings people, it makes people come back. You want to come back. So this area has helped, but there's high rises going up all over the place. So there's new apartments in Little Italy. There's condos coming. That's right on Pacific Highway, which is right down here, all over the place. There's building, all, there's hotels popping up. There's, I think there's a hotel coming up in Little Italy. So there's a lot happening. There are plans to revamp Seaport Village. They're going to build all new, they're gonna tear everything down, build new restaurants, build hotels. They're also gonna have an observation tower. So think Space Needle in Seattle. Aside from that, we're going to have a beach, boat docks, docks that you can go out paddle boarding and kayaking. They're going to have an aquarium. So this redevelopment is planning to open and be completed by the year 2028. Another thing that just opened in 2021 is right down here, it's called the Rady Shell. Such a cool venue. This is at Jacobs Park and they have concerts and symphonies. It's right on the water. It's absolutely stunning. It's a, it was a really cool thing that San Diego did was put this here. So some interesting facts. The average age for the downtown area is 37. 95% of all residents are childless, so no kids. And then also a whopping 48% of all residents have never been married. So who are not and have never been married. What does that tell me? It tells me that this is the heart for singles and young professionals people that want to live somewhere that's walkable, people that want to live somewhere that's close to things to do, that's by the water. And it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody's lifestyle. People are at different stages of their lives and they they need, some people will value more space um, over location per se. So it really just depends. It's also highly dog friendly. Uh, establishments will put out water bowls and then make sure your dog comes hungry because there is tons of dog treats to go around as well. Everywhere you go, pretty much dogs are welcome as well because they're, they're our kids, right? Dogs have become our kids. A lot of people have decided not to have kids. So what do we get into instead? We get dogs, lots and lots of dogs. I think it's the millennial way. I think we definitely started that. But overall, if you're looking to live somewhere walkable, where you, somewhere where you play, sleep and eat, then this is, this is the area. And it's also, there's really good, good investment opportunities if you're looking to purchase a rental as well. In fact, majority of all households are non-owner occupied. So that means that a lot of people own, but they don't live here, they live somewhere else. So really good opportunity to purchase and rent out. There will always be demand for rentals in this area too. So something that's worth considering if you're looking to buy a condo or so. And I can also point you in the direction of some of the best buildings 
that investors buy in because you want to buy in somewhere that doesn't have a high HOA and that also has the, H the HOA is ran properly where they have plenty of money. Because one thing that I always look out for when buying into an HOA is how are their financials? How much money do they have? Are they going to be putting any special assessments on their homeowners? Because let's say they don't have enough money to cover the cost of uh, resurfacing, resurfacing the pool, whatever it may be. It could be anything. We want to make sure that we buy into a strong HOA and I can point you in the direction of which buildings down here are some of the best for investors. All right. That wraps up our map tour of San Diego. I hope you enjoyed that. And I also hope that now you have a, a good understanding of what life is like living in the downtown area and what, uh, what are the differences in each pocket of the downtown area as well. All right, let's recap the market. So the median sales price for a condo in the downtown area is right around 675,000, and that is up 8% from this time last year. The median days on the market is just under 30, which compared to this time last year, they were selling for 10 days faster on average than they are in the current market. So the month of December, there were a total of 126 homes sold which is way down from the previous year, which we had 272 in December, 2021. So these stats tell us a few things. So homes are still selling on average under 30 days, which is great. Now the fact that there were over half the amount of sales compared to the previous year tells us that inventory has dropped uh, a lot, along with demand as well though. And as long as inventory levels stay low, we will continue to be in this seller's market. Now, once demand increases, we're taking a look in the rear view mirror and there could be a repeat of the last two years. That is what it will come to if we don't see more homes coming on the market. It is just what it is. I'm a local to Little Italy and I frequent the downtown area often. So if there is anything more you would like to know about this area, please reach out to my team and I. We are happy to have a more in-depth conversation on the market and also lifestyle here in downtown San Diego. Hey, thanks for watching. And like I said before, whether you're ready to make a move now or you're just planning ahead for your future, make sure you give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. We are happy to help you make that move to the best city in California. And as always, my friends, stay classy, San Diego.